Hello and welcome to Made in the Midlands TV. My name is Jason Pitt. Today I'm joined with Chris Greeno, uh, Director of Salop Powder Coating and Salop Design and Engineering. Good day, good day Chris. Hello, you okay? Yeah, very good, thanks. So we're going to start off by talking a little bit about um, your involvement in Made in the Midlands because I know you're also a Gold member but you're also our President uh, yeah. of the Council. Uh, so I wanted to ask you what your experience has been like since joining Made in the Midlands, um, what your role in the Presidency involves because obviously a lot of people will see the magazine, they'll, face, they'll, yeah. they'll know your face because yeah. it's usually half a page on page two. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, uh, what your experience has been like and what sort of impact it's, it's made to you generally and then we can go on to some of the you know, some of the more uh, topical uh, conversations about manufacturing, Brexit, that sort of thing. Okay. Well we joined Made in the Midlands in 2012 uh, as salad powder coating. So we've been in metal press work for 50 years and we branched out into powder coating to sort of limit our reliance on automotive press work. Uh, from 2009 when the recession hit obviously we were quite badly affected. And from that point in 2012, we put in the first of two powder coating lines. Uh, we've got our salad powder coating truck, which follows me around everywhere. And really it was a chance to join Made in the Midlands and see how we could network with other manufacturers, use it as a selling tool. So actually spread the brand of salad design and salad powder coating. From there, we've got more involved, um, ended up on the council in 2014, and then 2015 became President of Council uh, with the backing of the Council. Thank you very much to the Council. And really from there have gone from strength to strength with the brand of Made in the Midlands. I've seen Made in the Midlands grow certainly over the last two, three years and actually connect with members, try and promote manufacturing and through my role within the Made in the Midlands group and as President, I've tried to just promote manufacturing in the Midlands and what fantastic membership we have. And you do a fantastic job of that. Uh, no matter what time of the day it is, uh, there's always a tweet that comes on my, my Twitter feed with yeah. you uh, promoting uh, British manufacturing and some of the Yeah, I spend a, a, a lot of my own time. I'm quite passionate about manufacturing. I sort of fell into manufacturing 23 years ago uh, and it's given me a fantastic career. It's given me lots of opportunities and really I think we need to spread the word and be more proud of what we do in the Midlands. Absolutely, and you did a fantastic job at Salop. You built the training academy. Yes. Um, you've got the new new equipments that um, you would explain better than me. But it um, recycles the powder coating spray, doesn't it? And yeah, so we've got we've got two state of the art lines. The new one, the Norton line that we got installed, went in 2015. It's state of the art. It's the best in Europe. So we can do a colour change in seven minutes from black to white. We can paint three and a half metres. So if it's metal, we can paint it. And if it's metal, we can make it. So really it's about the opportunities are there. If you're willing to invest, willing to look at new markets, which Made in the Midlands members are, there are fantastic opportunities in UK manufacturing. Fantastic. Now we've been speaking about Brexit quite a lot in, in recent videos. And of course you headed the um, debates that we held at Wolverhampton University. Very um, interesting panel. Which was a, a, a good um, good day. Japanese TV and HK covered the uh, event. Uh, and, and last night I was at an Advantage Austria uh, event. They sent a trade mission, so their uh, embassy sent a delegation with some about a dozen or so of their staff. Uh, an MP from the upper parliament, uh, an advisor to BMW. And I was speaking informally to one or two of the, um, one or two of the senior uh, guests there, and you know the the, the feedback from uh, certainly the Austrian people uh, seemed to be that um, Britain are considered to be a proud nation. Uh, they decided to leave uh, the EU, and they all feel quite strongly that that Britain will be successful going forward. Uh, and in particular, um, obviously Austria has got close links with with Germany. Uh, Germany very central to the to the EU, uh, and particularly. Um, looking at Germany, um, we are their second biggest export market, and I've just asked Charlie for some statistics. And we have a, Germany have a fifty-one billion pounds surplus, uh, which is phenomenal. So it's certainly in Germany's interest to um, see that, that Britain gets a good trade deal, and we can negotiate something which is, uh, you know, to to everybody's interest. I don't think it's in anybody's interest for Britain not to have uh, some sort of um, single market access. Yeah. I, would, I would have thought. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, well, from uh, Going back to the Brexit vote, I voted to remain. Um, Richard, my MD, voted to leave. 
So we had differing views on how it would affect the company, how it would affect the UK. I think what we've clearly seen now since the vote is that Europe isn't going to turn its back on us. Europe needs us to succeed and it needs a trade deal with us. And I think you'll find that the rest of Europe, certainly the smaller countries, Austria and other countries, are actually looking to the UK as a sort of role model now. How we handle the coming months will dictate how Europe is shaped. Now, I think Theresa May has put some stakes in the ground, but what amazes me really is that the, most of our government now were on the Remain campaign. So is it in their best interest to push it through quickly? I think from a manufacturing point of view, we need a bit of stability. We'd like to see exactly how it's going to shape out uh, and the sooner the better, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, moving on to uh, the future of UK manufacturing going forward. Yeah. So obviously we've had Brexit, we've had that big shock to the system. Obviously yeah. we've we had the 2009 recession. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think uh, the future holds for British manufacturing? Well, I think if you look at the OEMs and the first tiers, I think they've had government backing, they've had support through funding and lots of other legislation which has made it easier for them to progress. I think the real key now is looking at SMEs, tier two, tier three and beyond. That is where the growth for the supply chain can come. So I think we need a clear path to government now for SMEs and I think Made in the Midlands can be part of that contact and actually help us get contact with government. How can we get funding, whether it be through government direct, through central government or the LEPs, how are they actually going to unlock this capacity which is in the supply chain? Yeah, I agree. And you've been taking um, the initiative in your uh, training academy. So we're talking yep. about investment for UK manufacturing. One of the biggest barriers, I think, to um, the success of manufacturing would be the next generation of people coming through. So uh, what would you advise government on the apprenticeships and what, it, and what can companies do? Well, what they need to do, I mean, as Salop Design, what we did last year, we teamed up with income training and we've actually opened a bespoke centre. So we renovated the building, they're running it. We invested £300,000 and we now have 30 apprentices in that centre. And that's for all Shropshire business. So we're running it as a separate training centre. And what government need to do is actually access, they've given us the, the sort of power through the apprenticeship levy, but what they've got to do is engage with manufacturers, engage with schools, engage with colleges, and actually promote manufacturing to the next generation, which is what we're doing at Salop. We go into local schools, we have school visits to our site, and really is key about showing the opportunities that are there. Obviously, I've had 23 years in manufacturing, and what we need to show now is there are careers. I think there's too many people who look at manufacturing as ups and downs, peaks and troughs, and it won't offer a long-term commitment to them, but it will. And through the apprenticeship route, I think we'll find now is an apprenticeship route is actually the start of a degree course, or it can be, but you end up knowing a company, you end up with a degree, and you end up with no student loan. So for me, that would be a, a no-brainer. And with your uh, training academy, what's the uptake? Are you getting a lot of people apply to be part of this? We are. We're getting, we've now got lots of businesses signed up. The problem is we're now having to go into the schools and interact with the youngsters, the parents and the teachers, because I think apprenticeships have been given a bad name. I think the government are taking a bold step by introducing the apprenticeship levy, but I think we need more interaction with government now to actually say, we need to shape the apprentices. We need to shape how the training providers are going to work, and that's why we teamed up with Income. We, we respect Income, we know what they do, they offer value apprentices, and we can now take that message into local business and schools. And I think the, the one thing I would take away from that is, you have built a training academy, and I've seen it, it's a, it's a well-kitted out um, uh, building, it was space that you wasn't previously doing anything with, yeah. and you've got a workshop, you've got the CAD CAM software and uh, desks at the top. and. You've done all that on three hundred thousand pounds, and I think there's a real uh, strong message to government, which is you can do these projects without having um, un unachievable budgets. And yeah. really, putting the power in the hands of you guys is far more effective than having a bureaucracy perhaps running these things. And yeah, or the colleges, or what you need is manufacturers. And now through the apprenticeship levy, we have actually got the power because we've got the spending power for our training. What we were keen to do at Salop is actually have that spending in the right way so we're getting value. We know the skills we're short of, we know what we need from the training centre and we can actually, through our connections with the local community, tie up with other businesses. Everyone I speak to says skills are the biggest thing stopping their business so we've taken the bold step and we're doing something about it in Shropshire. 
Fantastic. Well done. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for joining us, Chris. Okay.